Jesus said to go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to every person. We invite you to join us for the next 30 minutes as God's Word is presented, recorded live from the pulpit at Hilldale Church of Christ in Clarksville, Tennessee. Today's message is brought to you by Steve Kirby, Hilldale's pulpit minister. John 3 and verse 1 helps us to understand who we are and whose we are. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called children or sons of God. Sons of God. If we're a child of God, a Christian, we belong to him. It helps us to remember God takes ownership. God has welcomed me into his spiritual family. And whatever I may face during the year, during the day, during every situation, I know that I am anchored in the Lord. I am anchored in Christ. Hosea 4 and verse 6. The prophet said, God through the prophet said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are in destruction. My people are tossed here and there. My people are in a whirlwind because they lack knowledge. They lack knowledge of who I am. They lack knowledge of who they are in Christ. They lack knowledge of what their purpose is in life. They lack knowledge of what it is that God wants them, all of us, to do and how we can rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. My people are destroyed. Destroyed's not a pretty word. Destroyed's not a pretty word. We had a tornado come through our community not long ago. If you were in any of that area, you saw destroyed. Destruction. It was chaos. Bad. My people are destroyed because they don't know me. They don't know who I am. Helps us to know who and what we are, what we should be today, tomorrow, this year, and every year. Jesus said of his followers, he said, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, if you're, not, if you're not bringing flavor and joy and blessing to the relationships around you, guess what? You're just like dirt. You're good for nothing. It's like salt. It's lost its saltiness. You are the light of the world, he goes on to say. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, put it under something to hide the light, but they set it on a candlestick out in the middle of the room that it might give light to everybody in the room. And then he says, therefore, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Shine for me, God says. Shine the way we wa God wants us to. Rejoice in the Lord. Walk in his will. Does that mean there's not ever any trouble? No, it doesn't mean that. The devil's going to see to that. The devil's going to see that there's always going to be disappointments, hardships, injustices, wrongs. The devil is involved with that. God is not. The devil is involved with that always. But if we are anchored in God and his word, then we can better manage the situations that come. Colossians 3. If you be risen with Christ... Those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Now, you know, if I don't know the Bible says that, and when we go over these verses and we look at them and you say, oh, yeah, I remember the Bible says that, the same thing happens when I'm just studying, reading my Bible. I'll read and I'll say, oh, yeah, I remember that. That helps me to solidify my anchoring in the Lord. Helps me to try to remember, Steve, you have got to not be focused on the here and now. 
You have got to be focused and remain focused on eternity. You're just living for a little while in the here and now, like the song that Brother Tim led us in right before this lesson this morning. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the book. I am, Christians are not uh, earthly beings on a spiritual journey. We're spiritual uh, beings on an earthly sojourn. Thank you, Daryl Walker. Shared that with me years ago, and I thought I liked that. Romans 6. Turn there in your Bibles, please. Romans chapter 6. Well, you know, when you mark it with your marker, it's easy to turn. <laughs> Romans chapter 6. Let's begin with verse 3. Do you not know, with verse 1, he says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. You died to sin, no longer how can you live any longer in it? Verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead, even so we also should walk in newness of life. What are you saying, Paul? What are you saying, Holy Spirit, through Paul? You've got to remember who you are and act like it. Walk in newness of life. Make that your aim. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. In the likeness of his death, with the burial and resurrection in our baptism, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, isn't that wonderful, gone, and that the body of sin might be done away with, destroyed, isn't that wonderful, gone, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died once to sin for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Verse 11, likewise, in the same manner, you also consider or reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin rule or reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Sin doesn't have dominion over you. Helps us to know who we are and what we're supposed to be. Helps us to remember how we're supposed to live. I love Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might and his strength. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, God says, that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness and justice in all the earth. In these things I delight, thus says the Lord. My friend Keith Parker puts it in cornbread language, and this is how he summarized it. Don't brag on your brains. Don't brag on your brawn. And don't brag on your bucks. Brag on God. I just thought that's pretty, pretty plain. Pretty plain. Thank you, Keith. 2 Peter 1, 2 to 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus. You want grace in your life? You want peace in your life? Through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. That's how we get that. We don't get it in our career. We don't get it in our things. We don't get it in monetary matters. You want grace and peace, knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what my eternal purpose is. According to his divine power, has given us 
all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature. You read that and you say, man, this brother prayed a moment ago in our prayer, Brother Furman, God is all we need. God is all we need. <sighs> Little boy was supposed to recite his memory verse, going to recite the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. You probably can quote it. You probably learned it. But the little boy was trying to remember it, and he couldn't remember it, but this is what he said. He got up and he said, The Lord is my shepherd. And he paused. He couldn't remember the rest of it, and he said, And that's all I want. And he sat down. I think he did a pretty good job. That's all I want. Just from these scriptures alone, we can see how regular practice and habit of reading and studying God's Word helps us to know our value, our purpose, our identity, and ultimately, our eternal destination. And thereby, will help us to live a happier new year every year. Number two, you've heard me say this before. Perhaps most, if not all, of the problems we have in our lives is because we are either ignorant of God's Word or worse, we willfully ignore God's Word. God tells us what and how to live for Him. And we sometimes know, but then we willfully, purposely say, eh, I'm not going to worry about that. And it gets us in a heap of trouble every time. Every time. No one can grow spiritually for me. No one can read my Bible for me. I sing the little song with the kids in the daycare. Read your Bible and pray every day and you'll grow, grow, grow. And we stand up and we grow. We get taller and taller. And then we sing, neglect your Bible and forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And we go all the way down to the floor. Now, it's a simple little lesson for children and those that are not children, self-included. No one can read it for me. We can do better only when we know better. We can know better only when we learn better. And we can learn better only when we try to work on it, study, and work on it. First Timothy 4, verse 3, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to talk doctrine or teaching. Second Timothy 2 and 15, Study to show yourself approved unto God, or give diligence, handling aright the word of truth. Perhaps most of the reasons we have trouble is because we're either ignorant or we'll willfully ignore God's Word. When Paul met with the Ephesian elders in Acts chapter 20, he had been with them for three years, the most we of, at least during his missionary time. He'd spent three years in Ephesus, as far as the biblical record, the longest time he stayed any single place that we're aware of, as far as the biblical record is concerned. And he told those elders when he met them at Miletus, he said in back Acts 20 and verse 32, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the Word of His grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. I want you to hold to God's unchanging hand, and I want you to hold to God's Word and know it and live it. Psalm 119, verse 11, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Till I come, Paul said, give attention to reading to exhortation, and to doctrine. There are various methods and tools that can help us read and study the Bible every day. There are all kinds out there. You read a few chapters every day, read some scripture every day. Years ago, the one-year Bible from Tyndall was quite popular, where you read a section of the Old Testament, a section of the New Testament, you read a section of Psalms, and a section of Proverbs every day. 
Actually, he wound up reading Proverbs and Psalms twice, I believe, in their uh, um, plan. The guard Smith, we, if you've not read his uh, daily Bible, daily study Bible or narrated Bible, chronological Bible, it's a good read. I encourage you. It's a good one. There are various reading schedules. We, for years, we've had them on our round tables in the vestibule. We've had them uh, on uh, the end tables. And I've got one right here. I keep in my Bible. Just kind of helps me move along and get through it. I don't always follow it exactly like it does, but I always try to get through it. And the thing of it is, it helps me, is that I, I may get involved in Romans, and I say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to read just one chapter. I'm going to read several chapters because I'm just engrossed in the whole overall context. Or it might be something in the Old Testament. Anyway, all kinds of programs, Bible apps. We don't have an excuse. Daily Bible reading and study is a discipline I wish I had learned much earlier in my life. Much earlier. Now, I have up there Brother Doc Campbell. You may not know Doc. I knew Doc. He's deceased. Knew him over in Gallatin, Tennessee. At the time that I knew Brother Doc, he was 75 years old. And I could be in a Bible class, and I could be talking about something, and I could say, Doc, where does it say, and I would have a smidgen of a verse, and eight, seven, eight, nine times out of ten, he would be able to say, I believe that's over there in Hosea. I believe that's over there in Jeremiah. I believe that's in First Chronicles. But he'd start looking, and then he would give it to me. He was a walking book. He was 75 years old. He had read the Bible all the way through as many times as he was years old. He had read the Bible through 75 times. Few people have probably done that. Few Christians have probably done that. Few preachers have probably done that. Read your Bible and pray every day. Now, this is important. Someone has said it doesn't matter nearly as much how many times you've been through the Bible as it matters how many times the Bible has been through you. I think that's fair. What place priority does the Bible have in our lives? Is it just a Sunday morning book? Does it collect dust through the week? If your sweetheart, your child, your spouse, your mother, your grandchild wrote you a letter, what would it say about our relationship and our love for that person if we never read the letter or if we rarely ever looked at it? I don't think we'd feel very close to that person. Every page of this book, God says in one way or another, I love you. Please love me back. What place do our children have? Uh, the, know that our Bibles have in our lives? The fondest memory I have of my dad is sitting at the kitchen table when I'd come in from milking the cows, and he would be sitting there, and the Bible would be on the, the table in front of him. My dad only had one eye, and he got down close. He had an accident when he was a boy, and he would be right there studying it. A lot of times, he'd be reading it out loud, and he and Mom would be discussing it. Mom was cooking breakfast. I'm glad I have that memory. This is a not-so-humorous story. Preacher came to visit a family, and they were talking with the preacher on how wonderful the Bible is. Well, in the process of the discussion, the mother said to the young child, Darling, go back there in the bedroom, Mommy and Daddy's bedroom, and get that book you see Mommy and Daddy reading a lot. Now, I suspect she wanted her to bring the Bible back. Well, she came back with a Southern Living magazine. And nothing wrong with a Southern Living magazine unless it becomes your Bible. And that's not good, or any others that you'd like. Someone has said, if the devil can keep us ignorant, he can keep us impotent, powerless to live a godly life. That's so true. If he can keep us ignorant, he can keep us impotent. All right, consequences of being casual and avoiding God's word. Just write these verses down if you'd like. Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. We'll be spiritual babies and we'll stay babies. 
When for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. The principles are the oracles of God and are become in need of milk and not of strong meat. For strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. But he says babies, they just have milk. We'll be spiritual babies if we neglect God's word. Hosea 1, 4, 1, and also 6, our lives will be destroyed. There's no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We've already discussed and talked about that. Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 32. I don't have time to read all that, but if you'll jot it down, I want you to think about what they talked about in those verses. Those verses, he's basically said that people left God out of their lives. They left God out of their lives, and they were involved in every kind of terrible thing that you can read about anywhere in the Bible, right there in Romans chapter 1. They were involved in all kinds of things. And three times in those verses, the Bible says that God gave them up or gave them over. Let them have their way with the world and the nastiness in it. Those people, do you think they were happy in Romans chapter 1? That they had healthier lives, happier lives, better relationships with all their friends and family? I don't think so. I don't think so. They left God out. Quickly to close, some great benefits. We've already mentioned them, but here's a few. 1 Timothy 4.8. Godliness is profitable for all things, having the promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. We'll have abundant life now and also ultimately eternal life. First Timothy three or second Timothy three, the fourteen and fifteen, makes us wise unto salvation. Paul told Timothy to remember. From childhood you have known the Holy Scripture scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. Wise unto salvation. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. We can all quote it. The scriptures given by inspiration of God, profitable for reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman who would be God's man or woman may be complete, thoroughly, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Everything that's good, you can learn how to walk and live right here. Everything that's good. It will make us approved unto God and unashamed before God. Present yourself an approved workman. Doesn't have to be ashamed of their work, handling aright the word of truth. It connects me to God's power to salvation. The gospel is God's power to salvation. Tells me about how to be saved. It's able to save my soul. Receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. We receive and obtain faith through study and reading. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We'll not be in favor with the world, but we'll be uh, renew our minds by studying and renewing our thought process and remember what's important. God will consider us noble. Those who were in Thessalonica were more noble, or those in Berea, excuse me, were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all readiness of mind, and they searched the scriptures daily to see if what the Apostle Paul was preaching was true. We'll gain light and clear understanding. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple, Psalm 119 and 130. And in 165 of 119, great peace have they who love your law. Great peace have they who love your law. We'll purify our souls, become born again, having been born again, not of perishable, but of imperishable, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. You've purified your souls in obeying the truth, Peter says. Helps us to grow spiritually as newborn babes. So many, so many. <laughs> Daily Bible reading study is worth the effort. I put this in your bulletin this week. I just thought it was a great story. My sister-in-law sent it to me several years ago. Just thought it was a great story. 
Old man who lived on a farm in the mountains of eastern Kentucky with his young grandson. Each morning, grandpa was up sitting at the kitchen table reading from his old worn out Bible. The grandson wanted to be just like his granddaddy, wanted to imitate him in every way he could. One day the grandson said, Papa, I try to read the Bible just like you, but I don't understand it. And what I do understand, I forget as soon as I close the book. What good does reading the Bible do? The grandfather quietly turned from putting coal in the stove and said, Take this old wicker coal basket down to the river, son, and bring back a bucket of water. The boy did as he was told, even though the water leaked out from the wicker basket. And so before he got back to the house, the grandfather laughed and said, You'll have to move faster next time. So he sent him back to the river in the basket to try again. This time, the boy ran faster. But again, the wicker basket was empty before he could get to the house. Out of breath, he told his grandfather that it was impossible to carry water in a basket, and he went to get a bucket. Instead, the old man said, I don't want a bucket of water. I want a basket of water. You can do this. You'll just not, you're trying hard enough. And he went out the door to watch the boy try again. At this point, the boy knew it was impossible, but he wanted to show his grandfather that even if he ran as fast as he could, the water would leak out before he got far at all. The boy scooped the water and ran hard, but when he reached his grandfather, the bucket was again empty. Out of breath, he said, see, Papa, it's useless. The old man said, so you think it's useless? Look at the basket. The boy looked at the basket, and for the first time, he realized that the basket looked different. Instead of a dirty old wicker coal basket, it was clean. Then the grandfather said, son, that's what happens when you read the Bible. You might not understand or remember everything, but when you read it, it will change you from the inside. Take time to read God's Word. It will affect you for good even though you might not understand it all ways. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. All right. A happier new year every year. That is possible. We'll work on it with God. It is possible. Practice, read, study and know God and him better. This morning, do you need to say yes to God, obedience to the gospel to become a Christian or to renew your faith commitment to Christ as a Christian? We can assist you today in being baptized for the remission of sins or pray with and for you as you recommit your life to God. The blood of Jesus keeps cleansing us of all unrighteousness. There is a fountain. Here's my heart, Lord. Thank you for joining us today for a lesson that was presented to the congregation at Hildale Church of Christ in Clarksville, Tennessee. Anytime you are in the Clarksville area, we invite you to worship with us. A schedule of our services and directions to the building can be found on our website, www.hildalecc.org. Here's my life, Lord, speak what is true, speak what is true, speak what is true.